I just woke up at a place that I've never camped before, near mountains that I've never seen before, and looking for trails that I've never wheeled before. After spending time in Oregon and Washington, a proper Colorado adventure was calling my name. I'm surrounded by 12,000 foot peaks, I've got a fresh bottle of whiskey, and there's thunderstorms in the forecast. This is going to be an awesome weekend. gotten onto a hard trail. Guaranteed pinstripes is what I read. Some guaranteed climbs and some water crossings that are pretty much little streams like I've been driving along this whole time, but uh, they can be deep apparently. A lot of pretty waterfalls everywhere. And as soon as I get back to Colorado and get into the mountains in the summertime, I, it's just, it's so beautiful. And right now, this is so beautiful. The trail I'm on is pretty short and it leads to a larger network of forest access routes. And so far, I am very optimistic that I'm going to find some incredibly cool campsites out here. I recently got back from a two week trip of nearly constant driving. So for this weekend, I'm setting up the tent at the first spot that calls to me. I really just want to relax and take in what the mountains have to offer. stopping for a little bit of a lunch break. We have this entire mountain range behind us. It is just beautiful. I don't even know what town I'm looking down on. You can see there's some water down there, but I'd almost want to say this Independence Pass, but it can't be. I always find trails in places in Colorado that I've never been before. And uh, this view is one of the, definitely one of the best ones I've seen for just being right off the trail. As far as like a sunset possibility over this mountain, I don't know that you could do any better. Hopefully I can find something similar farther down the trail because I got a long way to go. I want to make it to where tomorrow's as short as possible because this is just a weekend trip. We've gotten some real downpours this week and honestly, I figured it could happen up here and it doesn't bother me at all just because I'm set up to hang out and be comfortable. And there's, there's like a, a nice ambiance that comes with the rain. 
it just calms everything down the bugs kind of dissipate it'll probably be cold but what can you do high elevation <laughs> I knew I was going to find some beautiful areas up here because honestly, it's not hard to do in Colorado. Living in the mountains means that I often get to see vast landscapes, but nothing quite like this. I am absolutely surrounded by expansive views. I was looking for a place that called to me, and I have absolutely found it. It's raining. We're at 11,500, almost 11,600 feet, and uh, it's going to be cold up here. But I think I just found the coolest spot that I'm going to find on this whole trip, and there's nobody here. And uh, honestly, it might be one of the coolest high country campsites I've ever seen. It's got a fire pit and everything and 360 degree views of the mountains. Uh, this is absolutely beautiful. I can't believe on a Saturday, I can't believe the spot's open, so I'm going for it. Just need one little rock and it'll be level. The temperatures are already fluctuating quite a bit. Rainstorm just moved over, some hail, and now we got some sunshine. So that's Colorado. And as you go up in elevation, you can expect this kind of stuff more and more often. I'm gonna set up everything. That way the rain does roll back in. We're totally uh, safe from it. We have a place to hide, but I know Blue's done with the trail for the day. Her little wrists get beat up as she gets older. She does worse and worse on these kinds of trips, so I need to give her a break. I know I'm not gonna find a better site than this today. There's just no way. I see some other vehicles in the distance and I'm sure there's some other cool trails and cool campsites, but I'm gonna get some incredible footage tonight. The stars are gonna be out and being this high, I'm gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. I'm very, very excited about this. So anyway, I'm gonna set up. Hopefully the wind is blowing this way or else when we go to sleep tonight, I'll have to reposition, which is never a big deal, especially with a freestanding awning because I can just jump in and uh, steer it as is and um, I don't have to set anything, put anything away. But uh, right now the wind's coming from this direction, but we'll just deal with it for now because I like being shielded from the road in case anybody else comes by on this trail. Now that my excruciating three minute camp setup is behind me, let me put this campsite into perspective for you.
I don't know that there's ever been a better campsite to watch the sunset. It will be setting over here and I have literally 360 degree views. So I can see dark clouds as far as the eye can see. So it's gonna be storms on and off all night tonight, which I'm okay with because like I said, um, assuming it doesn't get too dark, I'm gonna get some premium sunset footage and I'm very excited about that. Just because you get the, the clouds, a blue sky is great, but for the sunset, it's not nearly as pretty. You want that moisture in the air. And it's driving me crazy because I'll put my jacket on and then the sun pops out and it's like too hot to wear a jacket instantly. It gets cold as soon as the sun goes behind a cloud and that cool, moist air is moving through. And then as soon as the sun comes back out, it's just feels dry and hot again. The saying in Colorado is something like, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. Something unique about this place and other Western states is if you have an afternoon shower, say it rains for two hours, downpours. If you give it another two hours and the sun comes out, you almost can't tell that it rained a lot of the time. Sure, under trees and stuff, it's still gonna be a little bit moist, but it is so wild how fast things dry out here. In the distance right now, I see blue sky, I see storm clouds. I know that there's gonna be breaks in this, there's gonna be pockets of storms. I'm not concerned with it, I'm so used to it. And with my setup, that's why having good equipment, again, is so awesome to have because I'm not getting chased out of here. I wanna be here, and a lot of people, honestly, with different types of tent setups would probably be like, I'm not camping there in the storm. There's a storm moving in. And so for me, I just don't care. So satisfying how quick that is. Well, I kind of expected it, but pretty good sized hail, like pea sized hail. It's not really hail. It's like a soft sleet almost. It's little tiny snowballs, no big deal. Nothing that's gonna dent the truck or anything like that. I think camping like this is super cool. I don't necessarily want it to be beautiful every time, but I'm fortunate enough to be geared up for it, so. Rainbow over the mountains. I will drink to that. We got some more blue skies for a little while. Light rain falling. But I'll take it. I'm, I'm enjoying myself. Thunder, of course. This was one of those trips that I almost didn't come on. Last week I was gonna go camping and I just honestly, I couldn't do it. I couldn't bring myself to it because that two week trip through the Pacific Northwest, traveling, going to the Overland Expo, there's so much anxiety associated with it. It was kind of interesting because I've never, I've never really experienced uh, wanting time off so quickly after a trip. It just kind of burned me out, honestly. Usually on trips, I can 100% take being away from home for long term. And uh, I wanna just keep going. Like if I have a five day trip, I want it to be a two week trip. On this last PNW trip, I was very much ready to go home. It was, uh, I was ready to just do my thing and uh, have like a shower and have everything. My next vehicle build will fix some of those issues and it is being built specifically for the task at hand because I do wanna shoot this documentary type of film series and, uh, and so the FJ isn't the vehicle for that. I will be building another vehicle that's going to have more amenities in the FJ, not by much, but enough. Enough that I think it'll be so nice compared to what we're used to that, that we'll be able to stay out a little bit longer.
those smell burnt. Shit. Oh, I just burnt those to a crisp. Whew. How many more do I got? Just enough. Well, I definitely burned my ramen a little bit. I'm trying to keep up with the sunset. Because I'm I have different cameras going and stuff. Worth it. Oh, we need to get up there. Three hundred and sixty degree views of just incredible sunset. I knew it was gonna look like this because of the rain. So awesome. And the reason I stopped recording up here earlier was because a group of like five or six people stopped and they started walking down below here. And uh, they told me that there's a mountain lion den right there and that somebody they know actually saw a mountain lion right here. So that's exciting. I'll have to keep an eye on blue. I'm looking forward to tonight because tonight I'm gonna have just stars beyond belief. I'm quite confident in that. So. I'm gonna set up the uh, camera up here, here in a little while, and I'm just gonna do night lapses as long as I can get away with it. I just wanna get some sunset footage and hopefully see a mountain lion. What a day. It's been just awesome. All right, well, I hope I didn't throw too many uh, time lapses at you guys because I was having a good time getting those. It's like a good video only needs like one or two, but with the views up here and the sunset and everything, it was just hard not to get a bunch of them. If you guys look right out here into the field, I don't have a zoom lens because zoom lenses don't do as good at night, but there are a set of eyes right there that are pretty far apart. Probably three, four inches apart. There's something crouched down in that field right there. But one of them keeps going away, so it could be two different animals right next to each other, like two marmots or something. But those guys did tell me that there is a mountain lion den right here, so it is possible that that is that mountain lion. I don't think it's watching our camp necessarily. I think it's just probably looking at me because I have a big bright light on. But um, kind of interesting because I just looked out in that field. I thought I saw a second one that was like 20 yards away. And so that's the reason I was thinking that it's perhaps a uh, two different animals. But those are shining pretty bright. That's not a bear. They don't tend to just sit still like that. I can see its ears. I just saw it blink. Or am I just stupid? I can see ears, so I just assumed it's a cat. So here's the question. Sorry, I keep blinding the camera. Here's the question. I just saw ears, so I assumed it was a cat because people tend to think that it's a predator whenever we're in the dark. That might just be a deer sitting over in that field. Blue, stay. One hundred percent confirmed that that was a deer over there, which makes me feel better that there's not a mountain lion roaming. Not that it's going to bother me anyway, but for the sake of Blue, I just want to make sure she's okay. So, anyway, I think it's time. Blue, come here. Let's get you in this bed. Come here. Come here, dog. Hey, are you ready to get up in here? You ready to get up in this bed? Hold. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. With Blue put to bed, I can get my camera on the sky. I love long exposure photography, 
even though I'm not particularly good at it by professional standards. You guys know from previous videos that I like to ponder and sometimes investigate the night sky and what might be going on up there. Just a single long exposure photo like this unveils a distant galaxy. The light that we are seeing was emitted millions of years ago, and that light is just now reaching Earth. In each of the trillions of galaxies in the observable universe, most have around 100 billion stars. Each of those stars have the potential for a planet in the Goldilocks zone. There is well beyond a chance that somewhere out there among the darkness, another species is sitting on top of a mountain looking up at their night sky and wondering if they are alone in the universe. This trip definitely feels like it's too short, but it's given me a new favorite campsite and an opportunity to test out some new gear. And I'm always happy to get Blue out of the house as much as possible during her golden years. But for this weekend, it's time to start making our way back home. And while doing so, we have some new sections of trail that we get to explore. This has got to be one of the prettiest drives I've ever had out of a campsite. This trail appears to wrap through the top of the mountains for miles. This will absolutely be a place that I return to in the near future to test out the new truck and to share this incredible place with my off-road crew. And while I don't share my campsites to keep places like this wild, I did find this spot on Onyx Maps, and you can find places like this too. Recent updates to Onyx Off-Road make it a powerful tool for off-road adventure seekers.
I would love to get out and film this right now, but it is very steep all the way down. And it's too, uh, this section is too tight to be flying the drone. And honestly, I can't get out and film because uh, it's so steep. There was a second ago where I was basically holding blue in the back because we were vertical almost. A little muddy too, part of the deal. Due to yesterday's rain, so some of this stuff in the dark forest, because I was just talking about that, there's a few little sections where the sun doesn't hit. And so it's, it's not muddy muddy, but it's damp. And then right here, hitting sun, and it's dry as a bone. A lot of you are gonna know this, but a lot of you probably aren't, especially you guys that don't live in the mountains. Um, you need to be in four low, not four high. There's a lot of people that go four high and they don't go to four low for some reason. Yes, it's slow, but these areas are so steep that if you just ride your brakes all the way down, um, you can get brake fade and all of a sudden your brakes no longer work and then you're in a very serious situation. So you put it in a low low and you let the transmission do the work. If you try to climb something like this in four high, your transmission will be angry with you and it will be getting hot. And you do not want an overheated transmission out here. Uh, that would be a very bad situation. As we make our final descent towards paved roads, I'm getting excited to get home and dive into off-road maps to see what else this part of Colorado has to offer. gonna air up the tires, grab another coffee, and make an evening out of building a route for next weekend. There are more adventures ahead, so stay tuned. thank you so much for watching and feel free to check out my other adventure off-road and overland related content